reading is, of course, a great way to pass the time while travelling. So I've come here to the Great Central Railway in Loughborough to catch a train and see which of my three e-readers gives you most bang for your book. Well, first to compete with the 2017 Oasis is the Kobo Sage. It has the biggest screen on test at 8 inches and was released earlier this year. And the other contender is a colour e-reader from Pocketbook. Also released in 2021, it has a 7.8-inch screen and is the most expensive on test. But will either be able to compete with the 2017 Oasis from Amazon, which you can now pick up for around 120 quid? On to test one, features and design. Tim, hello. Ah, John, hello. Marvellous to see you. You too. And to get to grips with the e-readers, I've invited along voice actor Timothy Bentink, star of BBC Radio 4's The Archers and voice of London Underground announcements. He spent a career reading scripts for a living and is an e-reader convert. Well, I've got a Kindle and um, an iPad Mini, which I right. use for... In, in, a, in a reading way, eh? In a reading way. We mm -hmm. start with the uh, Kindle Oasis. It's got a 7-inch screen. Um, you can get it in 8 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte versions. As well as e-books, the Oasis also plays audiobooks, which you can listen to over Bluetooth. And at 194 grams, Amazon say it's been designed for long reading sessions. I'm quite, yeah. I'm quite impressed by the grip at the back there. And yeah, it's, it's nice and small and light and yeah, very good. Next up, the newer Kobo Sage with its 8-inch screen. This particular one's 32 uh, gigabytes, uh, so plenty of storage on here. It also does uh, audio books. You obviously don't get the Kindle store, but Kobo do have their own store, which is also very comprehensive because they're part of the Rakuten group, the Japanese content uh, purveyors. While the Kindle store has more books, the Kobo store still boasts six million titles and releases most new books at the same time as Amazon. But how does the Kobo compare in the design stakes? No, well, this is quite nice. It's quite unusual. It's got this sort of lip at the side here, hasn't it? Yeah. None of the other ones have, which I suppose is quite good from the kind of holding it in one hand point of view. Mm. Um, although we've got these two buttons here, which I'm not kind of familiar with. Well, I mean, um, essentially, to flip to and back through the pages. But... I suppose you can just go flip. You don't, you don't have to go like that, do you? You don't have to no, go that. No, is an I suppose that is an advantage. Yep. And lastly, onto the pocketbook ink pad and its 7.8 inch display, which gives you the option of colour or monochrome. Now, and that's 16 gigabyte expandable with a uh, memory card. Also does aud audio books, and you can use wired headphones with that one. There's a there's a 3.5 millimeter adapter or USB. BC. Like the others, the pocketbook has its own store, but it's very limited, so you may need to import books from elsewhere. No, it's nice. Mm. It's good, nice feel. And, uh, and sort of quite appley. It's more, appley more like feel. an iPad, you think, in terms yeah, because it, it doesn't have that sort of handle, that doesn't have that side no. bit to hold it with. And with that, all three e-readers have been thoroughly assessed on their features and design, which is best. Well, I'm slightly torn, really. I like the, the, the Kindle very much. Again, I'm used to the idea yes. of having a the Kindle, Kindle stores. Yes, um, I think the, the Kobo's nice. It's, it's got a nice feel to it there. Light, one-handed. Not too sure about the pocketbook. A bit worried about uh, being able to access all the books in the, on the planet like I usually can. No, I'm with you. I'm sort of sight torn between the Kindle and the Kobo. Maybe the Kindle just has the edge on this round, perhaps. On this round? Yes. I think, I think it probably does. So, with the widest selection of books and a well-balanced design, it's the Oasis that wins round one. And just in time, as our transporters arrive for test two, usability. Oh, John. Yes? Please mind the gap. Thank you, I will. <laughs> with the train being an ever popular place to read, we're hopping on board to find out which is the easiest to use on the move. And first up on the reading list is Treasure Island on the Oasis. The old sea dog at the Admiral Benbow. While the Oasis has the smallest screen on test, it's touch sensitive and has the same pixel density of the others, plus a built-in light. It's got this automatic um, uh, screen of brightness, which is quite good. So that in terms of legibility, font size? Legibility is fine, font size is absolutely fine, and it's all adjustable anyway. Yes. If it was too yep. small, you make it bigger and, and that. So, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy see. with that. On to the Kobo Sage. Like the Oasis, it has a touch screen, but it's also compatible with a stylus. Aha. Uh -huh. And you can sort of annotate the books. You can um, also, oh boy. also actually write separate notes and turn them into text. That's really good. As well as having a larger 8-inch screen, unlike the 2017 Oasis, you can adjust the temperature of the built-in light. Handy for nighttime reading. 
I really like the fact that you can write on it. That's a real plus point for me. On, in other ways, you know, it's got the buttons in the same way that that uh, Kindle has. You can adjust everything. I'm, I'm quite taken. A strong performance from the Kobo, but how does a colourful cartoon compare on the pocketbook? Yeah, there's a polar bear. What's a polar bear accent have? I can't find a steel anywhere. The pocketbook can display over 4,000 colours, but at reduced resolution. And despite an extra gigabyte of RAM, navigation is rather clunky. It's a bit slow on turning the pages, I think. It's not right. quite as quick. Out of the three, which do you think wins this round of the contest? For me, working as an actor, the Kobo with the pen. Purely because of its pen, really, gives it a little advantage for usability on a train. It does. Splendid. Another poor performance from the pocketbook, then, and another slick experience from the Oasis. But it's the Kobo with its annotation capabilities that takes the point in round two. Back at the station, I need some dazzling sunlight as we turn the page for our final test. Glare and contrast. Important when your holiday reading takes you to the pool or beach. Sadly, with today's weather, there'll be none of that. Now, the uh, weather's a bit changeable, so I thought I'd bring our own sun with us. If only we could take it with us wherever we went. All three e-readers have e-ink displays which should offer minimal glare and maximum contrast. How will they fare under the spotlight of my fake sun? The Oasis in particular claims to be glare-free. Um, what do you think? Well, it is. It's completely glare-free. Getting it straight at the sun and I can still read it. A thumbs up for the Oasis, then. How about the more expensive Kobo? This is difficult to compare because it's the same. I mean, it's very good. It's extremely good in, in bright light. If I were as rich as Mr Darcy, cried a young Lucas who came with his sisters, I would keep a pack of foxhounds and drink a bottle of wine a day. Mm. Certainly no problems with Tim reading off the Kobo. Can the pocketbook do as well? The paper is kind of greyer, isn't it? Yes. I mean, it still doesn't reflect. Just slightly less contrasty. But can the same be said in colour mode? I'd better get some dried seal blubber for the journey. So, yes, no, it works very well in colour. But it still can't compete with the higher contrast of the Oasis and Kobo. They share the spoils in this round, leaving them evenly matched after a day's testing. But at less than half the price of the Kobo, it's the 2017 Oasis that remains top of the e-reader charts.